This week, we're talking about a personal favorite attraction of mine. One that I never miss on my trips to Walt Disney World. It's a little hidden, so you might walk right past it without even knowing it's there. I am, of course, talking about Grand Fiesta Tour starring the Three Caballeros. No, I'm not pulling your leg. I do love this attraction. What makes it so endearing to me? Well, sit back and brace yourselves for butcher pronunciations as we dive into the history of the Grand Fiesta Tour. Our story begins in 1934. Walt Disney heard voice actor Clarence Nash doing what he thought was duck voice. He thought it was so funny that it needed to be shown in its own cartoon. Thus, Donald Duck was born, debuting in the Silly Symphony short, The Wise Little Hen. The character's popularity skyrocketed from there, eclipsing all other characters at the studio, even Mickey Mouse. In the 1940s, Disney was participating in the good neighbor policy to enforce good relationships with South American countries. The Second World War was taking shape, and the US didn't want them to join the Axis. As well, the studio was cut off from the European market, so they needed to adapt. As part of this, in 1942, they made the film Salibros Amigos, a collection of shorts centered on Latin American culture. In the segment Acuarela do Brasil, Donald, almost acting like an ambassador, met a Brazilian parrot named Jose Carioca. He was suave, cool, carefree, and friendly, showing him and the audience a good time. Jose proved popular enough to reappear in 1944's The Three Caballeros, another film made up of Latin American themed shorts. In the Mexico segment of the film, Jose and Donald are introduced to a rooster named Panchito. Unlike Jose, Panchito is fast talking, trigger happy, and fun loving. Together, the three birds become the three caballeros, perform a song and dance, and travel on a flying serape around Mexico. The rest is history. Skipping ahead a few decades, the Magic Kingdom opened to Orlando in 1971. The Mickey Mouse Review was an opening day attraction, sitting where Mickey's Philhar Magic is today. It closed in 1980, but became an opening day attraction at Tokyo Disneyland in 1983. It wasn't just replicated for Tokyo, it was the exact same, animatronics and all. Marking the... second time this happened. The show featured a segment starring Donald, Jose, and Panchito, where they sung a song as they got up to their usual antics. The show played in Tokyo until it closed in 2009. In 1982, El Rio del Tiempo opened with the rest of Epcot at the Mexico Pavilion in World Showcase. Located within the pyramid on the pavilion, it was a boat ride similar to It's a Small World. You sailed on the river of time through Mexican history, from the Aztecs to the modern, well, modern for the time, age. It featured animatronics and dioramas with screens. This opening day attraction lasted at Epcot for over two decades, beating out Journey into Imagination, Horizons, The World of Motion, and the original Universe of Energy. Still, the ride wasn't attracting many crowds. In the early 2000s, rumors began to fly around that it would be rethemed. Some guessed that the three Caballeros might move in. Thanks to their recent appearances on House of Mouse, they were regaining popularity, mainly for Jose and Panchito as they had fallen into relative obscurity in the US. The rumors were proven true in 2007, when El Rio del Tiempo closed to make way for Grand Fiesta Tour starring the three Caballeros. If you don't like IPs at Epcot, well, um, this is basically Ground Zero. Sorry. The attraction's plot is as follows. The three Caballeros are in Mexico, performing a concert. Panchito and Jose come on stage, but Donald is gone. Panchito calls in his flying serape and they run off to find him. It turns out that Donald went on his own tour of Mexico. Shenanigans and zoo. Eventually, the trio found each other, performed a sold-out concert, and all was well again. The ride system and scenes were basically unchanged from El Rio del Tiempo. The fiesta scene in the middle of the attraction was the exact same, with the same dolls and animatronics. The only things that were changed were the screens. El Rio del Tiempo featured footage of live actors surrounded by physical sets. The placement remained the same, only they were swapped for new footage of the caballeros. The new footage was live action spliced with hand-drawn animation. Fitting, given that The Three Caballeros was one of the earliest examples of the gimmick in a feature-length film. The animation was directed by Eric Goldberg, the animator behind characters like the genie from Aladdin, Phil from Hercules, and Lewis from The Princess and the Frog. He co-directed Pocahontas, and directed the Carnival of the Animals and Rhapsody of Blue segments of Fantasia 2000 as well. This was not the first time Goldberg had worked in this hybrid medium, as he was the animation director of Looney Tunes Back in Action. For the voice cast, all of the actors had portrayed their characters previously. Tony Anselmo continued his reign as the definitive Donald Duck, don't at me, but Jose and Panchita were played by a couple of voice acting legends. Jose was played by Rob Paulson, 
Unless you've never seen a cartoon in your life, you've probably heard his voice before, whether it be as Raphael in the original Ninja Turtles, Yakko in Animaniacs, Carl and Jimmy Neutron, or countless others. Panchito, meanwhile, was played by Carlos Alzraki, the voice of Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, Laszlo from Camp Laszlo, and Mr. Crocker from Fairly Odd Parents, among many others. This isn't the only place on Disney property where you can hear him either, as he played Mike Wazowski over at the Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Rob and Carlos have been playing Jose and Panchito for the past couple decades, starting with House of Mouse. Aside from once or twice, they've been the most consistent voices for the characters in the modern age. And we, the two of you, and you probably get this a lot from fans who will say, oh my god, I was just at uh, uh, Epcot, uh -huh. and I'm in the... Uh, the the, the Scare Floor, right? Yeah, the thing where they, they, they have... Um, like the different countries. Oh yes. And so Panchito. It's a pleasure to see you, Donald. Right, pa Panchito and um, what's with the name of the other? Caballeros, the yeah. gay caballeros. Right. We're the three. We were the, the three caballeros. It's, it's of Donald, um, Donald, and Panchito and um, Jose. Jose. And so we were the two parents. Yes. Together, Jose and Panchito. The attraction remained unchanged for nine years until December of 2015, when the finale received an upgrade. The ending scene was changed from a screen of the characters to a trio of animatronics synced to the music. The jury is out on which version is better, but the animatronics do make for a nice finale, seeing them physically there. However, these weren't made for the attraction. After traveling the world, the caballeros from the Mickey Mouse Review finally returned to Florida, where they belong. Grand Fiesta Tour is a hidden gem in World Showcase. So many people walk past it, but it's a great time. It has great music, great animation, and it's just fun. Not every ride has to be Flight of Passage or Rise of the Resistance. Sometimes a simple dark ride can be the best. Still, the attraction's future remains uncertain. After Coco came out, it seems to be only a matter of time before it takes over the entire pavilion, like how Frozen took over the Norway pavilion. Those models of the pyramid have a lot of guitars and not a lot of ducks. But with no news at D23, and with half of Epcot being construction land for the foreseeable future, it might be a while before we hear anything concrete. So, my advice? The next time you find yourself at World Showcase, take a stroll into the Mexico Pavilion and listen to the birdies sing. I promise you won't regret it. And that was the complete history of Grand Fiesta Tour. I am probably the only person who cares enough about the ride to document all of that, so I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, I'll pass a couple of questions off to you. What are your thoughts on the ride? Do you think it should stay, or are you looking forward to that Coco takeover? Whatever you're thinking, let me know down in the comments. But, that's all the time I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care!